for the entire world, we only have the basic products, raw satellite image that cover the entire world. So we propose some kind of solution, and there are a lot of details I don't want to discuss with you guys. But basic um, problem is because we have images collected from different satellites, they have different geo positioning error or some other error due to the camera collaboration, unstable st satellite motion. So the first problem we need to solve is to geo correct them to make sure they aligned with, perfectly with each other, they registered well with each other. And we use some technology in a feature matching method to do this, which, which I caught here the, is the geo correction. Once we have all the geo corrected image from all the possible satellite, we use them to, we use multi, multi view stereo reconstruction, meaning if we have n geo corrected images, we just randomly pick any two of them to do the triangulation stereo reconstruction to generate one damn product. Then, because we have n images, that means we roughly have n square damn product. And because all the images we are using are aligned perfectly well with each other, that means at the end, we just simply combine all the damn product to have our eventual damn images. Now, we do some small scale experiment, and luckily, this worked out pretty well. Now, the next problem is we are thinking of how can we, are we able to construct the dam for the entire world, meaning we need to have some techniques that scale up very easily and also with, with respect to region size and the number of images. So we go back to the, we go to the Amazon cloud. It turns out that's a good solution. And, and in the end, we developed a fully automated pipeline on Amazon cloud. The user just need to upload their satellite images onto S3 bucket and uh, circle the region where we want the dam to cover and launch the pipeline wait a few days, and uh, you have the dam on the S3 bucket. So to give you an idea about the cost, because the entire thing we developed is fully open source, so the only money you have to spend is renting the AWS service that includes the S3 or the EC2 instance cost. And for example, if you want to construct 100 square kilometer region using 100 geo-correct satellite images, it's going to take you a few days and less than $500. And I believe this is much cheaper than the LiDAR. And there you go. This is our product, one example. It's a 100 square kilometer region in San Diego, Chile, where we have 300 geocorrected satellite images. And as you may see here, in the downtown region, we basically recover all the tall buildings, even, even though they may occlude each other in the image domain. And in the rural region that close to the mountain, we still see clearly all the building footprints, and we were pretty happy about this. And this one is a video we, ran, we reconstructed using this damn product. And as you may see here, even you go to the street view level, you still have pretty good of the building facade. And this is raw data. We do not do any post-processing to refine the dams. And this is one meter by one meter resolution. This is on our, another site in Amman, Jordan, with 60 geocrit satellite images. This is 100 square kilometer as well. And this one is a much larger region, which is 500 square kilometer in, in downtown region of the Sydney, Australia. We used 120 geocrit satellite images. And here you can see all the trees along the parking way are visible and all the gyms, stadiums, buildings are visible as well. And even the planes that parking next to the boarding gate of the, of the airport. So, but one thing is, you may notice here, this is water, the ocean. Because of the scatter effect, we never be able to reconstruct pretty well in the water surface. But luckily, because you guys give us pretty good Landsat data, such as OpenStreetMap, we can easily mask out the water region from our dam. And this is a pretty close look for the urban region, very dense urban region in Bangalore, India. 
So as you may see here, we, we can see the very narrow alleys in, 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 uh, in the building, and we have very, very tiny building detected, which is roughly the smallest size. is roughly like three meter by three meter building. This is a rural region where we have isolated building and a couple of trees. We all, always be able to tell from our dam. And uh, as you hear, we can even tell the slight terrain elevation variation from our dam because we have such high resolution, unlike the general 30 meter by 30 meter SRG dam product. Now they look, they look pretty, but we need to ask ourselves, how accurate the elevation values are, because if they are not accurate at all, then it's useless. So in order to measure the accuracy, we go back to see how close we are to the LiDAR product, because we know LiDAR is pretty accurate. For that purpose, we pick a site where coastal LiDAR is available. It's in, along the coastline of the South Carolina, where we have the uh, LiDAR from NOAA website, which is public, publicly available. And this LiDAR has 75 centimeter horizontal accuracy and 15 centimeter vertical accuracy. So in this region, we have roughly 90 images available. And in the end, we successfully geocorrected 60 of them. That means in the uh, average 50, uh, 500 meter by 500 meter region along the coastline, we have roughly 15 images per, per tile. This is the, we try to align, see whether we have some global shift of our dam to the LiDAR. This animation shows this. And remember, because when we do the geocorrection, we have different satellites. And the most accurate satellite we have is GOI-1, if I remember correctly. And for GOI-1, the geopositioning error is roughly one meter to two meter. And that means even we do our georegistration perfect well, we still have this geopositioning error roughly as one meter. This is where the global shift you observe in this, in, this, in this animation. So before the accuracy measurement, we have to fix this global shift first. And luckily, to fix this, is, is, this is very easy. You just do some iteration, seeing you can fix it very easy. Now, we fix the global shift, and everything aligned pretty well. And you, I see, you see the LiDAR, the, the dam, they align perfectly well. And one interesting observation we have here is, if you take, look, take a close look, there's a water tower. And water tower typically always have a spherical surface on the top. That means when you LiDAR laser shoot to this top spherical surface, you, you're gonna have scatter, and that's why LiDAR is actually lower than our dam. And we measure the actual water tower height using the shadow in this satellite images. And it turns out we are closer, so we were happy. <laughs> now we, we know how to measure it. We go to a larger region, and we pick a 20 square kilometer region where we have two square kilometer LiDAR data available and we do the calculation to check how close we our elevation to the LiDAR, and the answer is the root mean square error is roughly 1.5 meter. That means at 95% confidence level, our dam elevation is close to LiDAR within three meter, and we were pretty happy about this because first, we are much cheaper than LiDAR, and we have much larger coverage. This is important actually because we, we are thinking of the global coverage of this high resolution dam. And this is important as well because the user may want to know, okay, I have this technique and I want to use it, but how many images I have to purchase from DigiGlobe or from NASA or from some small satellite company? Then this gives you the answer. If you want to reconstruct the typical terrain like this, relatively flat and a lot of small single family house next to each other, then if you have 10 images, the air, you can get similar uh, LiDAR product within three meter accuracy, but if you only had used two of them, the air is quite large, um, larger than 15 meter. But when, when you have more than 10, the air, 
the, it converges to a good quality. And this answer give me 10, 20, we're done. And so now we have good quality of the dam image, one meter by one meter resolution. What can we do about them? We can use them for the land classification, like you can detect building, because we have the building elevation value available. Or you can run conv convolutional neural network before you only run uh, CNN using RGB band, but now you can incorporate this elevation band to run some RGBD neural network, and you may have some interesting result in terms of classification or, or detection. And here, I'm gonna show one of the simple example about structural change detection, because we always have good alignment in our system, meaning everything aligned well with each other. So doing this structural change de detection with respect time turns out to be easy, because we just run our pipeline using satellite images taken from different time. In this site, we run, we generate them using the images that before 2010, and we generate another dam after using the images after 2010. And we align them, them together. And this animation, you can tell, okay, this tree is removed after 2010. The, those two buildings as well is removed before and after. And this neighborhood is constructed after 2010. And before 2010, it may be under construction because if you see the dam, you're gonna say it's be, the, the before dam is quite noisy. That means it's being constructed. And after 2010, it's done. And this single building as well. Oh, sorry. Here it somehow give you idea of our detection rate of the structure change. Now, this is summary. We have, we use large amount of uh, set, basic satellite imagery to generate one meter by one meter very high resolution dam in a fair price thanks to the AWS. And we can use this dam for various applications. Here, I just show one of the structure change detection as example. and. Uh, those them in, in terms of accuracy, they are similar to LiDAR, not, perfect, uh, not as good as LiDAR, but pretty close. And there are some other applications using these uh, dams. And, there, uh, and in fact, there's gonna be a talk tomorrow of, uh, from uh, Craig in ARA, they're gonna using satellite imagery plus our dam to, to do some interesting land classification and building detection task. And thank you. Questions? Oh, okay, because of time, we have to stop here. Sorry. <laughs>